introduce the epidemic chain and the Shanghai and the, the disease prevention and the control measures in this big city, just like a city very similar like New York. The first case to Shanghai is from Wuhan city. The almost the same time the patient enters Shanghai, I think the time I remember that it's a January 2020, I think. Almost at the same time, the first case uh, emerged in United States. The time is January 21st. So the same time, so in Shanghai, and at the same time, the United States, we almost face the same disease. So in the, according to our experience in Wuhan, we actually, we understand that if there, the outbreak of the disease emerged in our city, it were really, it were, were a big problem for us. I don't think we will have enough beds that we can uh, provide to the ICU. Uh, so we have, we do not have the very, uh, very, very, uh, we have, I don't have so many uh, ICU beds that we can provide to the uh, patients who need to go to the, the ICU. So therefore, at the very, uh, very early stage, we want to control the disease. At the early stage, well, you can see here, the first wave in Shanghai is a time that the lockdown of Wuhan, January 23. And uh, the, we can see the top in our curve is, it emerged at the January 20, uh, 29 and the January 3rd, the patients, found in my city, the cases is only 30 uh, cases in our city. After that, we can see here the wave decrease. And uh, of course, we take a lot of measures in our city to control the disease. And uh, recently, we can see here, the, now we stay in the later stage. We can see here, we today we only faced uh, the challenge from the foreign imported cases. But we take a very strict measures in our city. Uh, so we can see here every day in Shanghai today, we have uh, 10 to 30 cases every day in our city. However, we control all the imported cases and uh, no uh, community circulations in our city. So this is what we have done in the total two months we just want to control the disease in the very early stage. And what we have done, so I will introduce for that. So first uh, we will see that this is uh, the predict from, uh, uh, this is a predict from the paper published in Lancet that before the, uh, the case import to Shanghai, we can find here the epidemic trend of Shanghai according to the prediction in the paper published by the Lancet, we can find that they uh, predicted there maybe there, there, there will be uh, 800,000 cases will be found in Shanghai in such a big uh, city and, uh, and so many imported cases from Wuhan be because before the lockdown of the city, there's almost uh, uh, lots of uh, I think at, at least there will be uh, 100,000 people enter Shanghai by the airplane. So actually, we should find all the cases here and stop the community circulation in our city. So if we can do better, according to the paper in the Lancet, they predicted that there will be 80,000 uh, patients in our city. But actually, lastly, we only have 4, 000, uh, 400 cases today in Shanghai. So uh, we can say that if we take the very strict measures in a big city, we still have the time to control the circulation of the disease in our community. So I, I actually, I understand that different country will take different measures to control the disease. But Shanghai, according to our experience, we actually, we do not stop everything in our city during the two months. But 
we still get some uh, experience for controlling the disease from very high predicted curve to now we can see here very low curve in our actual cases in Shanghai. So what the measures we took in our city, so we can see here, first of all, I think the lockdown uh, of the city, the Wuhan city is the most important. Actually, the population traveling to or leaving Shanghai uh, has, has significantly decreased by approximately 50% during the, after the lockdown of Wuhan. And uh, the second is a slowdown. So uh, no input cases from Wuhan, but before the lockdown of the Wuhan, actually there's a lot of people, they entered, entered Shanghai already. But what we took, the measure is to, we slow down the city, all gathering activities and the most of the recreational sites, including restaurants, theater, and et cetera, were closed. But the, but the supermarket and the, the, all the, all the uh, chemicals still the work for the people. So therefore, during the time uh, the, of the two months, even though the marketing, most of the marketing, recreational marketing is closed, but the, what the, the market is very needed for the usual life for the people is still open. So actually the Shanghai is not locked down. It just slowed down. We still, we can uh, have our own vehicle, the transport and uh, to other uh, sites of the, the whole Shanghai is not closed. So only the slow. Uh, so all the people in Shanghai will, we would be uh, encouraged to stay at home. Shanghai so is very lucky that during the two months, we have the spring festival holidays. And the Shanghai government, we are the first uh, city in China, we announced that we will extend our spring festival holiday to 17 days from January 24th until to February 9th. After February 9th, so uh, we will start work in our city. So everybody will go to work after uh, months. Now today, now we know that it's almost March uh, 25th. Actually, we started our job for almost one, uh, more than one month. So we will minimize the possible infections for patients in the incubation period. So in the very early stage, in the incubation period, so we are very, very lucky that we stay at home during the spring festivals. So I think the social, dis uh, uh, social distancing is very important for us to control the disease at a very early stage. But uh, of course, today, even in the city with the outbreak, I think it is still very important. All the citizens were encouraged to stay at home unless for necessary working, shopping and the medical treatment. I think this is the first stage we have done in our city. So the second one is what you will be very interested in what we have done in the hospital, uh, mainly in the, the comprehensive hospital, just like my hospital. So a very big hospital with 2000 beds. What we have done during so many uh, imported patients, fever patients uh, in our uh, 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 city and what's the stewardship for our diagnostics for the uh, suspected COVID patients. So this, I think, so what we have done in our hospital, I think the secret is we optimize the diagnostic flow and we do every needed uh, diagnostic uh, test for the sus suspected patients in our hospitals. Uh, I will give the experience from my hospital, Hwasang Hospital, a hospital with 2,000 beds as a case for, for you to uh, about how to do the, the diagnostic test in our hospital as an experience for other uh, uh, hospitals in now today in the uh, United States, also in other cities. And uh, we can see here, this is the criteria to request uh, the SARS, the, the COVID uh, virus test is in my city. In Shanghai, 
uh, totally the city opened the 117 designated fever clinics. These fever clinics, they will uh, recruit the suspected cases and then send the uh, send samples to the CDC, but in some big hospitals, just like my hospital, we will do the detection firstly in our hospitals by ourselves. Now today, uh, Shanghai, we uh, added more 182 fever sentinel hospital. This is, uh, uh, so this is a network in our city who, uh, the, I think the network can help us to find the suspected uh, cases. And then all the patients who met one epidemiology criteria and just if the patients from the site in Wuhan or other cities today in from the foreign uh, countries, just like the site with outbreak, just like the uh, countries in Europe. So I think this is the epidemiological criteria. If the the, the, the people today, uh, the plus the one clinical relevant symptom, just like the cough, fever, I think they can go to these clinics. We will do the uh, diagnostic test for the patients directly. So this is a criteria what we will do the diagnostics test for the patients. Everything is free. The, the, furthermore, the suspected COVID-19 patients would be admitted to into the quarantine ward and the CDC staff would come for sampling and do the epidemiological question. So if the Sentinel Hospital and the other, just like the hospital, like a, my hospital, the big hospitals, we also, we have as in the big hospitals, we will have the quarantine ward in our fever clinic or our in ID department. So if the patient is suspected of COVID, the CDC staff, the region, I mean, the, in our different region in Shanghai, we, they have their unique CDC staff. They will come to the hospitals, come for sampling and do the epidemiological question. I think the CDC staff in the United States, maybe not, they, uh, you do not have so many uh, staff in your countries, but today in Shanghai, in every region in Shanghai, we have lots of city staff can help us for sampling and uh, do the epidemiological tracking and uh, do the uh, confirmed uh, diagnostic test for our patients. If the nucleic acid test turn out positive, all patients were enrolled into the designated hospital in Shanghai. In Shanghai, we have uh, designated hospitals who will care for all the PCR positive patients. So today I also, I stay in the designated hospitals to uh, lead my expert panel to see all the patients. Uh, the designated hospitals in Shanghai, so in, this is a public health medical center and uh, actually we have the capacity to uh, have the beds, more than 1000 beds that we can contain all the uh, the, the, the uh, confirmed cases of COVID. So this is what we have done in Shanghai, the stewardship of the diagnosis and the, the quarantine and the treatment for the patients here. Uh, for the diagnostic, I will say more about, so the co-infection in the COVID patients. Uh, in the first stage, I actually, I noticed that in United States, some hospitals, they will do the flu and some other virus uh, di diagnostic uh, test firstly. If the, if the patient is positive for flu or other virus, just like adenovirus and the other pathogens, they will do no more COVID testing for the patients. But according to our, uh, uh, our trial in Huasang Hospital with 2,000 beds, the big hospitals, actually we screened all the suspected cases we found almost uh, there are lots of co-infection in our people i will see here some data so uh so this is a co-infections so 
just like uh, we I, here, I we, we published a paper in the emerging microbus and the infection to present our uh, 20 uh, cases with uh, COVID. We can find here 11 cases here, they have the only COVID infection, but the nine cases, they as have the co-infection, including the influenza B, uh, influenza A, and the renal virus, enterovirus, and uh, uh, also the, 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 the other, the, uh, the common virus related with the fever here. So I think in the, uh, in the time with the COVID outbreak, I do not think it is uh, no detection for the patients with the fever for COVID can be accepted in Shanghai. We actually, we noticed that there's a lot of co-infection here. So uh, another concern is about the high uh, false negative rate in the PCR. So in all the confirmed cases that we found, the first time the PCR, the positive rate is uh, almost 70%. But the second time the PCR, it will be uh, increase the negative cases more 50%. But if the patient is highly suspected in my hospitals, so even the two times of the PCR is negative, I will do the natural generation sequencing for the patient. So if we do further natural generation sequencing for the patient, all the cases can be found. Of course, there will be a very high cost if we do so many detection for the people. Therefore, I just uh, uh, recommend that. So in the outbreak uh, uh, the, the season, so the COVID, the PCR, the, uh, the false, positive, neg uh, negative, the false negative rate. So maybe between 10% uh, uh, to 30%, uh, even we sometimes we will do the double check for the patients. So uh, because the diagnostic test sometimes not so sensitive, so sometimes we will think if we just take the CT uh, scan as, uh, the, as our clinical diagnosis for the patient, but actually we found even the COVID, the CT scan, the phenomena is very typical, but sometimes actually we cannot discriminate the other uh, disease from the COVID. So the upline we can see here, all the CT scan are from the confirmed uh, suspected uh, confirmed COVID patients, but the, uh, the, the we can see the down line, which we can find it here, so there are some other pathogen caused uh, the pneumonia. We can see here, the, there are some cases from the uh, RSV, uh, the virus, uh, viral pneumonia, mycoplasma caused the pneumonia, and or para influenza virus caused pneumonia. All the cases are uh, confirmed by our natural generation sequencing and uh, the multiple plex PCR to confirm the cases uh, other than the COVID. Therefore, the CT scan, I think, is not enough for us to confirm the case. We still need the molecular diagnosis for the patient. So in my hospitals, we, if we have suspected the, the COVID, we will collect those virus specimens to the PCR uh, for the other pathogens together with the first time the COVID the PCR, the, the virus PCR. If the positive for COVID, we will send the patient to the, uh, the quarantine disease, uh, quarantine site with of the designated hospitals. If the first time COVID PCR detection is negative, we will send the sample for the second time the PCR. So second time it's still negative, as uh, and uh, of course the positive will uh, confirm the case. But if it's still negative. If clinically we highly suspect of the critical care, critical cases, we will do the furthermore, the natural sequencing, multiple plastic PCR, and also send the, 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 the uh, sample to the national uh, certified third party agency to give the positive or negative uh, diagnosis for the patient. If everything is negative, we will rule out the patient and transfer the patient to the common uh, ICU ward or the, the common uh, respiratory department. So this is what we have done in our city. We can see here, uh, 
so more and more patients. So this we can see left side is the days from, from the suspected contact to symptoms onset. So way this is, I think, maybe the incubation uh, incubation days for the patient left side of the graph we can see here. Majorly, the median uh, data is uh, six days. The right side is the days from symptoms onset to hospitalizations. We can see here in Shanghai. So uh, if we, we uh, uh, the, the first time the patient have symptoms, almost after uh, I think four to five days, the patient will be diagnosed and sent to quarantine. So the experience here in Shanghai, the timely diagnosis and the, the timely diagnosis and the time the, 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 the timely diagnosis and the timely quarantine is very important for us to stop the circulation of the, 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 the case in community. So I think the time is the most important here to find the case, give the timely quarantine, I think here is the, the major, so the, the, the experience in here to stop the circulation of the cases in our uh, uh, community. So up to now, we only have 400 cases in Shanghai and the 60 cases from the all the, uh, the 400 cases are from the foreign country now. So today, everything changed. We, our major job, we will do to stop the, the cases for in the custom and uh, also in the community to con control the imported cases. So this uh, is uh, uh, the all the cases here, we can see here from the very early stage to now, we can find here, this is a very high curve during the uh, 130, uh, January 30 uh, and the January 29, this is uh, the, the, the peak of our the, the, all the cases. So there's uh, two colors in all the cases that we can find here. The green one is the cases uh, emerged in the community without the uh, without the travel traveling history to uh, Wuhan or other big city. So the red one is the imported cases. So in Shanghai, uh, according to our previous uh, experience, we found that our experience is to control the circulation of the cases in the community. So here, therefore, we found that the we found that the the we found that all the cases uh, the I can see here the green ones. I mean the cases from the community is not so many cases here. So I found if we have a lot of community circulation, I think we cannot control the disease very well. So I think here the 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 diagnostics and the final cases timely uh, is very very important. So this graph is from Italy. Italy here we can we know that in the very early stage all the cases are from other countries. But today we found that the early control of the local transmission is has not been done very well. So therefore the disease spread now we can see here that all the cases are from the community in Italy. So I think today's strategy for control the cases in Italy, I think it should be changed and not take the very early strategy just like that in Shanghai. So uh, in the remaining time, I will talk about some treatment options for the, the, the COVID. I stay uh, at the hospital, the hospital every day, just the major uh, job uh, currently for me within the two months, I just do the treatment for the patients to save the people there. So uh, today I know that in our city, we have 400 cases and the four uh, of them dead. So only uh, I think the 1% of the uh, very ill the patients uh, now is uh, now uh, dead, but uh, almost 95% of the patient now now they, they uh, uh, actually say recovered and uh, 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 left our hospital already. So I will give some treatment opportunity. So, so experience for you for what we have done in our uh, hospitals, the designated hospitals. 
First of all, I will introduce the antiviral treatment. Today, there's a lot of uh, recommendation of the antivirals. And this, of course, there's a lot of debate from all the, uh, the, 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 the antiviral treatment. The recommendation is controversial from different countries, from different papers, and also different uh, doctors. Uh, according to my experience and our pu published papers, I today I will say that currently no effective antiviral treatment has been identified. So uh, almost every drug we used in our hospitals for the patients, including the Abidol uh, tablets, including the lopinavir, ritonavir combination therapy. Of course, Shanghai is almost the first city in the world to use the hydroxy color uh, chloroquine uh, in our patients. And uh, uh, in China also have some experience for the remdesivir, but today I know that the United States, you have more experience for using the uh, remdesivir for the patients. So we actually, we do all the uh, uh, clinical trial in China using such drugs. But in the meantime, uh, uh, I, I, I just, uh, what I want to say is that the efficacy today in uh, the world, uh, every drug, even there's a lot of paper published that say this drug is good or not good. But uh, according to my experience, not so uh, significantly uh, uh, efficacy in these uh, patients we can see from this antiviral treatment. Uh, in the very early stage, we published a paper to say that the lopitonavir and ritonavir are not so effective. Actually, we know that from the paper published in the New England Journal of Medicine by the Dr. Bing Cao from Beijing, they published a paper in New England Journal of Medicine, also agree with us previously published Chinese journal about the efficacy of lopitonavir and ritonavir Navier, the, 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 the treatment. Today, the, it's a very controversial as about the efficacy of the hydroxy chloroquine sulfate. Uh, according to my experience, maybe there's uh, some efficacy of this drug, but not so significantly. The, effic the efficacy from the other controlled the, the, the cohort. So still in China, I think, we, the China, there's a multiple center study for the hydroxy chloroquine uh, and uh, compared with other antiviral treatment, but not remdesivir. I think the paper will be published soon about this the multiple, uh, uh, multiple, uh, m multiple center study uh, for give the very uh, good evaluation of the the, the hydroxy chloroquine for this drug in Shanghai. Um, today, I actually, I cannot recommend anyone for you to do the, the preventive or the treatment. But of course, all the, these drugs, I do not see any very severe side effects from my patients. So I think the compassionate drug should could be used under permitted situations, including uh, the hydroxy chloroquine and uh, included the remdesivir in Shanghai and also in the world. So the furthermore is about what, what is the most fundamental treatment I think still I, I still I want to say it is the oxygen. So here is a paper published by my colleague who went to Wuhan from Zhongshan Hospital, Yanling Song. They published a paper in the JAMA. They say that in uh, in all the, the 144 of the, the total uh, 201 patients were discharged from the hospital already, but still they have 84 patients delivered ARDS. So 53 were admitted to the intensive care unit. So 53, in, uh, they were admitted to the int intensive care unit ICU. Uh, the, the, and uh, received the mechanical ventilation and the 44 died. So the, uh, in Wuhan, my colleague 
in Wuhan, they found that the mortality in the critical care patients is very, very high. So, so 20, almost 22 or 23 percent of the patient, patient died. So I read the paper uh, and uh, I found that in all the patients with ARDS and uh, in Wuhan, only 6 percent. So only 6 percent, only uh, 6 percent. Six patients. Uh, only, only, only six patients. Six, six, uh, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, uh, it's six patients, six patients. And the one uh, is also the mechanical the ventilation with the ECMO. So I think a rate is not enough. So I think very high mortality is related with the medical source limitation. So this is a major, I think, is a major uh, reason that cause uh, very high mortality in the Wuhan and also in Italy today. So we can compare the data from uh, Wuhan and uh, Shanghai. All 17 ARDS patients in early stage, we were gave, gave the invasive mechanical ventilation and the six of them were treated with ECMO. So today in all the patients in Shanghai, in 70 ARDS, very, I mean critical ear the patients, only four patients, uh, only uh, so, so, and the four patients and the died, and the uh, six uh, ARDS patients were discharged. So in all the critical care in Shanghai, the mortality is 23, but we found that the in all the the 77 patients from Wuhan, 44 patients died. So, so the I I think the the we can compare the the among the all the invasive mechanical ventilation support rate seven percent in Wuhan and the one hundred percent in Shanghai and the mortality rate today in the critical care crit, critically ill patients. 52% mortality and 23 mortality in Shanghai in the critical ear patients. So I think the medical resource the, for the ICU is a very, very important if we have lots of patients in our city. So, furthermore, I think if there's some indicate that we all uh, uh, let us know very early stages uh, progress of the patient. I think the indication the D-dimer and the LDH is very important. Furthermore, of course, we find maybe that uh, the anticoagulation uh, treatment for the patient in very early stage is also it will help us to reduce the microthrombus birth uh, in, the, in the patients. So, uh, so we can see here, this is a fruit, this is a, this is a fruit from a patient with uh, the lots of the microthrombus, but this phenomenon not so frequent in Shanghai. In all the uh, 400 patients in Shanghai, only one patient, they emerged as this phenomenon. So I think the anticoagulation at the very early stage, uh, uh, according to the value of the D-dimer and uh, is very important. The other side is very controversial is for using the corticosteroids. Today, I know that that according to the, uh, the guideline from WHO and also guideline from the United States uh, respiratory the ex uh, uh, doctors experience that <coughs> the corticosteroid is not encouraged. However, uh, so in China, I think we still have a very narrow window that can help us to stop the progression of the patients to, from, to stop the progression the patients uh, stay at the severe stage, but not progress to the critical ill stage. The critical ill patients, I think we need to give the patients the mechanical ventilation support. But if we give the patient a very narrow window, uh, with just like if the CT scan progress very quickly, but the LDH is not so high, I think we can just give the patients very uh, low and uh, short duration corticosteroid, sometimes it can help to decrease the progression rate from the 
critical uh, from the severe case to critical care, uh, cr critical ear the case. So maybe we still need a more prospective study to find that if we use corticosteroid in some small part of the patient with the severe the phenomenon. Okay, uh, this is uh, the potential effect of treatment the, uh, from Shanghai. So the other treatment, I think the life support critical air is very, also is very crucial. Just a right time frame to nasal uh, cannula or oxygen, oxygen inhalation, high flow nasal uh, cannula oxygen therapy, invasive mechanical ventilation, and the ECMO should be determined for the patients. In Shanghai, I think in all the patients, 20% of the patients, they need just a bed. We give any kind of the oxygen therapy. But 5% of all patients, I think, maybe they need the, the uh, very high level oxygen therapy, maybe the invasive mechanical ventilation uh, or ECMO for the patient. So organ support, hemodynamic stability, nutritional support, uh, the analgesia and the sedation should be maintained according to the situation. In the, if it, the video, patients with uh, critical ills. So I think just uh, one by one, just individually for treat, treating the patient. I think uh, we, I do not see uh, any very big difference from the other viral pneumonia in our COVID patients. Uh, now about the prognosis for the patient. So overall mortality now in the world in now is COVID-19 is around three to 4% and uh, near or less 1% in Shanghai. The main risk groups are elderly. In Shanghai, actually, the elderly part of the patient is the highest in China. All the patients uh, uh, died in my cohort. Most of them just very high uh, elderly, uh, high age, and uh, almost eight more than uh, 75 years older. So the patient, uh, uh, another one is about the previously underlying disease. The young people also has a relatively low chance or progressing to severe disease state should be aware of the fact that they could easily transmit the disease to others. Uh, this is just recommend for, uh, for you that if the patient, the young patient have the underlying disease, just the heart disease, or hypertension, and the, or, or, or the, 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 uh, the DM, I think, uh, the, they still have the, the risk to progress. Sometimes the time from the mild to severe is very quickly. Uh, the, the median time from the mild to the severe is eight days, but sometimes just three days will progress to the very severe the status. Now, the last uh, the recommendation for you is about how to protect the medical personnel. Uh, actually, in China, we protect the medical personnel very good. Uh, uh, up to now, all the my medical personnel sent to Wuhan and uh, all my medical personnel in Shanghai, we have the no medical personnel infected by the COVID. So therefore, we will do the qualified and standardized process. That means including doctor patient access is different. Medical personnel access is, is actually, we have to do this very strictly. Secondly, appropriate personnel protective equipment is very important, including the masks, isolation gowns, uh, goggles or visors, uh, double layer gloves, double layer shoes covers in uh, our world. Uh, but I, I, I don't think <coughs> If we do not have so many uh, PPE, we will still have some uh, very important uh, PPE for our medical personnel. <coughs> then the comprehensive mask or positive pressure sometimes we still need. In Shanghai, we have the uh, uh, positive pressure breathing mask for our personnel. But sometimes in Wuhan, we do not have so many positive pressure breathing mask, maskers. I, I think this, uh, the positive pressure breathing mask only for the doctors who will do, <coughs> who will do the examination or will do uh, some uh, specific, the, 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 
the the medical uh, so so treatment for the patient. I think may be needed if the aerosol is very easy to spread in a very short distance in very narrow space. So then the disinfection and the isolation is also is very important. Negative pressure ward in Shanghai, but no negative pressure ward in Wuhan. I think the negative pressure ward may be just uh, according to the, the condition every hospital. The other is use the hydrogen peroxide to disinfect the environment and at least every four hours to wipe the surface or objective. The use of hyd uh, hydrogen peroxide to disinfect the environment at the end. So this is what we have done in Shanghai. So thank you very much for your uh, time. And uh, I just, uh, I think we, I, I spend uh, too many time and uh, now the time of Q&A not so, so, uh, so, so many. So now I will transfer my uh, time to the coordinate. Dr. Wang, Kai Yue, yeah. Okay, so uh, next session is the Q&A session. Uh, in order to maximize the using time and help the doctors and the healthcare workers, we pre-collected some questions from Stanford Healthcare, Santa Clara County Hospitals, New York Hospitals, and the CIBC members. So we will start with those questions. If we have enough time, we will get to the questions submitted by the audience. If you have additional questions and suggestions, please email them to us at info.cabsweb.org after the webinar. Okay, so let's start the first question. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Kai Yue. And uh, now I will continue uh, my part for the Q&A for you. And uh, yeah. mm. uh, so, uh, Professor Professor Zhao, would you mind to share your screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, the that questions. Was, uh, one, one minute. Uh, just, just every seconds. Yeah. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yes, we oh, Can you see? Uh, yes. uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm here with, I, I will together with my colleague to answer all the questions for you. Uh, and uh, so, some questions were answered by my colleague. He, uh, she do the job for, for what you ask. Okay. So firstly, I will uh, answer the question about what's the time window between infection and test positive. And uh, then uh, uh, the, I, I think I will ask my colleague to answer this question. Can you answer this question, Dr. Uh, I? Yeah. So I just want the time window between infection and the test positive. You do every uh, the, 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 the test for the patients in our hospital. Okay, okay. you answer this question. Okay. Uh, hello everyone, I'm a colleague also at Fashan Hospital. So concerning this question, so, uh, so concerning this question, what is the time window between infection and test positive? From our soul, we, we believe that if a patient acquired infection, uh, the time it took for the PCR test to turn positive would be a really quite a uh, close range of time, possibly uh, under two or three days, it would test positive. However, there is the other test, the serological test. Uh, we have the uh, IgM antibody and IgG antibody for the serological test. The positive result would sometimes turn positive, uh, I think, in about eight to 10 days after the onset of diseases. So actually for PCR, the test would turn positive pretty quickly. However, what we have learned is that, especially uh, for newly published data in the Lancet infectious diseases, I believe, uh, all the scientists have found that actually it's the, the viral load was actually the highest during the first week of the uh, disease onset. So basically for this for these diseases, the the test positive rate would, could be much higher at the early onset diseases than the latest. So for general public, what are the criteria to request a uh, SARS-CoV-2 PCR test for healthcare workers? So here is what we do in Shanghai. 
in Shanghai, the test requirement was made by the physicians and doctors, and all the patients should uh, meet with two criteria, which is at least one uh, epidemiological criteria and one clinical criteria. So for epidemiological criteria, the patient has to return from a a region or a country that has previously reported with a local transmitted diseases. So right now, actually in Shanghai, this criteria has been very widened. Um, previously, at the very early start of the epidemic, we usually only test people from Wuhan or uh, Hubei province or patients who are in contact with the uh, confirmed cases. But right now, uh, the epi uh, epidemiological criteria will require patients coming from basically around the world uh, because all the world has a um, reported local transmitted um, outbreak in their in their countries, and also if the patient has un in, has been in contact with uh, confirmed laboratory confirmed patient, or if the patient uh, during their household there are two or three close contact who has also who has all required the same symptoms, so if under such three conditions, uh, if the patient met with at least one of them he would met with the epidemiological criteria. Apart from that, if the patient also has any kind of clinical symptoms such as fever, cough, uh, or even diarrhea, um, we can, uh, the patient would met, and then the patient would have get a PCR test. So basically, I think in China, our testing was very strong and actually pretty widened. And we try to test all kinds of suspected patients. And I think that is the key for Shanghai to keep a very close monitoring of the whole academic trend. And um, the third question I believe is what are the pros and cons of PCR-based tests versus antibody tests, false positive, false negative rates. Um, from our test, we have not done a lot of antibody-based tests. Uh, we have done all PCR-based tests um, of, of our all suspected patients, but antibody tests have been performed only in 50 or 60 patients. So from our point of view, um, basically, basically PCR are the golden diagnostic standard. That is like no, um, there's no 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 other method that can beat the PCR based test. However, we should understand the potential of antibody test. The potential of antibody test to me is more like a uh, complementary test, uh, alternative um, beside PCR test. Um, if the patient, uh, the antibody test will usually turn positive in the later disease period, usually eight to 10 days after the disease onset. So during that time, I think the, if the patient has a low viral load and if the PCR test, because we all know the PCR test has some false negative rate. So during that point, uh, if the PCR test in the later disease process uh, become, uh, become negative, maybe this is when the antibody-based test could provide some useful um, useful tool in diagnosis. Also, the antibody test may play a more vital role in the, uh, in the overall uh, abdominal glucose test if you want to know the overall uh, infection rate uh, during the population. That may be the, uh, the reuse of antibody test, in my opinion. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, Dr. I, uh, I think you give a very detailed explanation for the diagnostics. And you also uh, see that the young generation uh, doctors in China, the English is very good, much better than me. So uh, I, I, will, uh, I will answer the second question is about the, so how to prevent the viral RNA degradation during sample processing. Uh, and uh, I think this is uh, another uh, it's a laboratory uh, uh, question. I think my colleague will answer the question. He, she uh, did the, 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 the laboratory job in my, uh, in my ward. Okay, uh, answer the question. <laughs> INA degradation. Do you think the INA degradation will happen in our sample processing? Uh, usually we just try to process the sample as soon as possible as we got it. Um, so basically we try to process the sample four to six hours during the after we collect it. And if not, we should put it at least in the, uh, I think in the refrigerator, I think it's um, minus 20 degrees or minus 80 degrees. That will be okay to prevent the degradation. Okay, now for the people who are self quarantined for 40 days at home, should they be tested if yes, when and how frequent? Actually, if the, uh, the, if, if the suspect case have the self quarantined 
for four days and no symptoms. I we will do not think uh, he or she is a suspected case. Actually, I will I, I would think the 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 uh, we will do not do any uh, uh, we will do uh, not do any de detection for the 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 people. Uh, what is risk uh, of infection for pregnant women and infant compared with other demographic group? If in fact, what are the treatment options? Actually, not so many pregnant and uh, children uh, infected in uh, Chinese people. However, the, but now we found that uh, lots of some, so sometimes there are some children cases. But today, I will say that all the children cases are very mild and uh, no antiviral treatment in Shanghai. I think everything is very good. The prognosis is very good. No severe cases, no, no, no dead cases in Shanghai. Now, up to now, we still have the 30 to uh, 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 50 uh, cases already in, uh, in Shanghai. And I think the children and the pregnant today and the no dead case and no severe uh, cases, is, everything is good. So then I will wait, uh, I will answer the, the quickly for the, this question about from mild to severe symptoms, how long uh, uh, will it take? Actually, I answered this, this uh, question in my presentation. I think 80.5 days is uh, mild to severe symptoms. Uh, why people with underlying medical condition are at high, high, high risk? Young age, but with underlying conditions are also at high risk, that's right. It's, uh, especially for the a patient with a heart disease, I think, is uh, majorly the highest height. Sometimes I found that the virus so have have some effect on the heart. So at a large population level, do you observe the attenuation of the infectivity of pathogenesis of SARS-CoV-2 -CoV of time? I don't think so. Now you will find that not so many severe people, the rate of the, the severe case is not so high at, at the very early stage because we find lots of patients with asymptomatic cases we found. So the ratio, the rate, the rate of the, the severe case is a decrease. But actually, I do not think there's a, a related with attenuation of the infectivity on pathogenicity. So uh, imibrofen and acetaminophen, actually we do not use so many uh, uh, NSAID. But, but I, I actually, I will recommend the acetaminophen, which is so usually used in all the cases and no side effects for that. Literature reports that ERB inhibit. I do not see any effect, uh, efficacy of the ERB inhibit. So I, I, I also, I do not see, uh, I wait, do not see observe people taking ERB can show a higher chance for the, uh, the, the, the COVID infection. So I think no effect of the ARB inhibitor to the patients in China. COVID treatment, what is the percentage of the recovered patients showing detectable neutralizing antibody? Every case in the, uh, every case recovered, we will see the, the antibody, but is the antibody work or not? Actually, I cannot answer this question. There's a different kind of the antibody. Of course, I believe in the acute infection, one of the antibody can work can be have the efficacy against the COVID. Will upcoming summer slow down global pandemic of COVID? Sure. The upcoming, uh, upcoming summer, of course, the pandemic of COVID will slow down because the United States take action right now. I think if the United States take action, everything will, the, the, the pandemic will be slowed down. But I do not think it will eliminate it in this year. Maybe the, in the winter, we will another a small curve of the disease, I don't know. I cannot predict for that. But of course, the summer, uh, upcoming summer, everything will slow down. However, I think that in the coming two or three months, it's very, very important for us to take action to stop the spread of the disease. So everything we have done in Shanghai is very strict uh, for the patients. Of course, every country have their, their own condition. I think just take the very important measures to do their job. So hydroxychloroquine for prevention and the treatment, I agree with you that there's some, some data uh, support to using to use hydroxychloroquine, but also there's some other controversial data, so do not support. But if we do the prophylaxis treatment for the, uh, uh, the medical personnel or the house contact, I think maybe it's okay 
because we do not see any side effects for the for all the cases we uh, treated in the in Shanghai. So this is about hydroxy uh, the treatment. Now, how to use uh, the dosage? Uh, actually, we in Shanghai we use the first day we will take four hundred milligram BID the first day. In the second day and continuously we will use four hundred uh, per uh, one four hundred uh, once daily for the patient. We will not use uh, azithromycin together with the hydroxychloroquine because we're concerned about the hepatic injury, the liver injury for the combination therapy. So therefore in China, we just take the monotherapy for the patients. Uh, the protection healthcare works, of course, this is very, very important. Of course, the most important is to cover the head, I think. So how often the healthcare infected from the virus? Uh, so in China, up to now, only in Wuhan, in very early stage, they do not take any PPE, think there's a very high rate of the healthcare work infected. But today in Shanghai, and all the medical personnel sent to Wuhan from my ward, I, I do not see any doctor infected or any nurse infected with the virus. If regular surgical mask is sufficient for healthcare, I think it's not enough. I, I think not enough. In all our fever clinic, we will ask my colleague to take the N95. Uh, are you routinely testing healthcare workers who are exposed to COVID patients? In China, some hospitals will do that. In my hospital, I will do that. But actually, in most of the hospitals will not do that. So I think if no symptoms, if we take very good PPE, I think maybe it's not necessary. So the, the last one is also about the, the, the PPE. What is the minimum workflow to pressure, uh, preserve PPE while still protect work? I think the, 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 the mask, the mouse mask is very important. So this is the basic uh, the protect. And uh, can COVID be transmitted by air droplet? I, I do not see the, 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 the droplet in, uh, uh, in my hospital, but we found that if we, we do not take any, uh, pre, uh, any pro Protector equipment, I think the drop, the, the droplet in the airborne, I think is still at risk. Uh, but I do not see any uh, patients who was uh, get the who get the, the infection in the elevator or in in the hospital fever clinic. They just take the 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 the, the infection in the very uh, uh, intimate the the context. Just in house context is a major part. At the U.S., healthcare workers go home after work. What procedure needed to be done to prevent spreading the virus to family members? Yes, this is a good question. My colleagues in Shanghai Children Hospitals, they just do what you have done in the United States. All the health workers go home after work. But in my hospital today, in Shanghai Public Health Center, in the Disney Hospital, I actually we will stay at the hospital. So actually this morning, I asked my colleague in Shanghai Children Hospitals, all the healthcare work, they go home after work. So today they actually, they have care about care for almost 30 to 40 cases of children patients. So they go home every day. They just take very good PPE and they have a bath and they have some cleaning in the, for the nose, mouth every day. And after that, we will go home with his uh, family members. And the, during they stay at the home, they will not have the, the, the dinner with his family members together. They just have the dinner separately, separately. Remember that, separately with uh, his or her family members. So this is their experience. Do not have the dinner together. So the health works in Shanghai. So uh, protection of healthcare works, this is about the PPE. More is better, more is better. For healthcare workers, they interact with COVID patients. What needed to be done before eating and drinking? I think the PPE, if you do the PPE good, I think uh, <coughs> it will be of no problem. If you know enough PPE, I think the dangerous and the risk is still there. Of course, more cleaning is better. <coughs> the cleaning, including the face and also the nose. Discharging the a follow up. I think uh, <coughs> the way just uh, the patient will do the PCR two times uh, negative, they will discharge. Discharge in the two weeks, uh, self-quarantine at home. 
that's that's enough. All my patient uh, in Shanghai, the rebound rate and not so high. So I think the 14 days is enough. If a patient survived severe COVID, will he or her son suffer long-term injury, fibrosis, this time, not the same, just like in 203, the SARS. This time, all severe COVID-19 patients discharged and they will, they will recover everything after two weeks. And some patients now still, they come to my hospital to thank me, giving me a thanks letter. I can see he or she can, uh, uh, can uh, have the very good recovery of the disease. Therefore, I think even the patients have some fibrosis, but not so severe, not the same with the SARS. So therefore, this is all the experience from Shanghai experience. Now almost uh, four uh, minutes and uh, more than the, 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 the plan, the time. So I will uh, give the, the, uh, the time for Dr. Tian. Am I, I, I'm done for today's sharing, okay.